In this video, we will demystify the Fourier series. The Fourier series often presents people trouble because of its form and the way it's expressed graphically. However, the concept behind it is quite understandable, which you will hopefully see after this video. The most common way to write the Fourier series is as an infinite summation. Something like this. The form of this expression is quite complicated in itself as it is an infinite summation with complex values, complex c sub k, and a complex exponential here all together in one term. But what this really means and what it comes down to is not so bad and that's what we're going to explore here. So what we're going to do first is rewrite this in a broken out form. In other words, I'll just say that we come from some values and we are going to explore things from c sub negative 2 to c sub 2 and look at the terms individually. So we have this. Here all I did was write out five terms in the summation centered around the zeroth term where k equals zero. We have k equals negative one and all I did was substitute a negative one in, in place of every k. So negative one here, negative one here, same thing with negative two and positive one, positive two and so on. Of course this is an infinite series so it keeps on going in all directions. But we will focus on these terms here. Then grouping terms we get this expression. All right, so again, we've put this into another kind of a form, and again, it's still complex and still complicated, but we're getting somewhere. Now, C sub K itself is a complex value. This means that we can write C sub K in terms of a polar notation, where we represent it in terms of its amplitude and its phase in this form where we have some magnitude times e to the j phase. This is just a representation of any complex number. Any complex number can be written in this way. So if we substitute that in to our previous expression we get something like this. Now it might look like we actually made things more complicated, but this is going to simplify in just a moment, so bear with me. One thing that we're going to do here is we're going to make an, an assumption. And this assumption is that c sub k is equal to the complex conjugate of c sub negative k. What this means is that the magnitude of c sub k is equal to the magnitude of c sub minus k and the angles, the angle of c sub k or the phase is equal to minus the phase of c sub minus k. So there's an even symmetry on the amplitude and an odd symmetry on the phases. The reasoning for this is presented in my other video on Fourier series so for more detail I would recommend to watch that. In this video though we're just trying to get some intuition for why we use the form that we do. So using this assumption we can further rewrite our previous equation in the following form. Where here we have replaced each occurrence of the magnitude of c sub negative 1 with magnitude of c sub 1 and same thing with 2 because of this even symmetry and we've replaced the phase of c sub negative 1 with negative phase of c sub 1 due to this odd symmetry of phases and we get this kind of an expression. Now we can factor some things out and see what happens.
at this point we're actually in a form that we want to have because we can recognize these kinds of terms here using Euler's identity as cosines specifically using Euler's identity we get that this is 2 cosine of omega naught t plus phase of C1 and this one right here is 2 cosine of 2 omega naught t plus phase of C2 and so on of course don't forget that there are infinitely many terms it will be 2 cosine of 3 omega naught t plus phase of C3 and so on so let's rewrite this one more time as this where we see that this basically just ends up being an infinite summation of cosines each one scaled by a certain value and also phase offset by a certain value now again I haven't talked about what some of these terms are such as omega zero or the fundamental frequency and how we came about with this even an odd symmetry that we used but the details of that are presented in my other video on Fourier series. Again, this is just about building up intuition. And what we see is that if we follow all of these rules, we end up with a summation of cosines. And that's it. It basically says the Fourier series is just an infinite summation of cosines. But it's usually written in that complex exponential form that is much more difficult to decipher. Then let's look at an application through an example. So in this example, we'll take a signal x of t which will be 3 cosine of 2t plus pi thirds plus 8 cosine of 10t minus pi fourths so just a summation of two cosines itself suppose we want to find its Fourier series well, the first thing is that we are going to define the fundamental frequency, omega 0, as 2. And once again, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but based on that, we can just match terms to our summation from before. We can see immediately that C0 is equal to 0, because there is no constant term here. C1 is going to equal something, because we have a term in this form. We have a term with an omega naught t. So in other words, we have 2, since omega naught is 2, 2t. Two so we have this term right here. So this must equal this. And then we just match values once again. This means that the amplitude of C1 must be equal to 3 halves in order to match this form right here, because 2 amplitude of C1 is equal to 3. And we have that the phase of C1 is equal to pi thirds. Again, just matching this term to this one. This means that C1 itself is equal to 3 halves e to the j pi thirds. Since it's that complex quantity that's equal to its amplitude times e to the j phase. Then we can keep going and we see that C2 is equal to 0 because there is no term with a cosine of 4t. Same thing with cosine of 6t. As we keep on increasing the counter k in front of omega naught, it will be 1 omega naught, 2 omega naught, 3 omega naught, 4, and so on as we keep going in the series, but there are no such terms until we hit 10, which is C5. So C3 is 0, C4 is 0, C5, though, well, its amplitude is going to be equal to. 8 halves or 4 and its phase again just matching terms is equal to negative pi fourths so therefore C5 is equal to 4 e to the minus j pi fourths and then from here we can also get the corresponding negative coefficients specifically C sub negative 1 well following those symmetries we get that that's 3 halves e to the minus j by thirds, same amplitude, opposite phase, and same thing here. C sub negative 5 is equal to 4 
e to the positive j pi fourths, again preserving those symmetries. And likewise, c sub negative 2 is 0, c sub negative 3 is 0, and so on. So what we come up with is that there are only four non-zero Fourier series coefficients here that completely define this entire signal. Now the usual representation of the Fourier series coefficients is not going to be like this where we just write out each of the coefficients, but rather it's going to be through a plot. And the way that we plot the Fourier series is by using two plots on the omega or frequency axis, one to represent the magnitude and the other to represent the phases. Now the reason I do the plots this way with no negative components on the amplitude and negative components and positive on the phase is because the amplitude will never be negative, but the phase will, as we will see shortly. So as an example, without picking any actual value, just making them up, the way we plot it is we plot this value here as the amplitude of C sub 0, because it's at 0 frequency, whatever it is. And then we can have another value, let's say something like this, at omega 0, and we also know that it has to be the same at negative omega 0 because of that even symmetry. So this is the amplitude of C1 and the amplitude of C sub negative 1, which are going to be the same. And then we can look at another value. And again, it's going to be the same due to the symmetry at 2 omega 0 and negative 2 omega 0. And this is going to be the amplitude of C sub 2 and amplitude of C sub negative 2. And so on. It keeps on going for all infinity. With the phase, it's going to be similar. So I'll assume a phase of 0 at 0. And let's, let's just plot something positive here at omega 0. This is the angle or the phase of C1. And we know it has to be the opposite due to that odd symmetry at negative omega 0. So this is the phase of C sub negative 1. And then let's say we have a negative phase at 2 omega 0. And this is the phase of C sub 2. And we know it has to be the opposite at negative 2 omega 0 for the phase of C sub negative 2. And again, this keeps going depending on what actual coefficients you have. So let's use this to analyze the example that we had just looked at previously. So we saw that C1 is equal to 3 halves e to the j pi thirds. C sub minus 1 is equal to 3 halves e to the minus j pi thirds. C5 is equal to 4 e to the minus j pi fourths. C minus 5 is equal to 4 e to the positive j pi fourths. And C sub k is equal to 0 for k not equal to plus or minus 1 and plus and or minus 5. So that's what we came up with. But again, this is not the usual way we're going to represent this. Normally, we're going to plot these values. So again, we have our amplitude plot, and we have our phase plot, and here we have very definite values. So we know that we don't have anything for C0, so this is going to be a 0 at 0. Then we know that at C sub 1, we have an amplitude of 3 halves and a phase of pi thirds. So let's draw that. We have an amplitude of 3 halves and a phase of pi thirds. And this is at omega is equal to omega 0, or 2 specifically in this case, since omega 0 was 2 for us. Now, we know right away what we're going to have on the negative side, too. It's going to be the same in amplitude, so 3 halves at negative 2 and the opposite in phase. So it'll be negative pi thirds at negative 2. And we had a phase of 0 at 0 because c sub 0 is equal to 0. Now we know that c sub 2, 3, and 4 are each equal to 0. So we know their amplitudes are also going to be equal to 0. So this is at 4, 6, and 8. 
and likewise the phases are also equal to 0 at 4, 6, and 8. And then we get to our frequency of 10, or C sub 5, and we have an amplitude of 4. And likewise on the negative side. So same exact thing, and then amplitude of 4 at negative 10. And same thing with phase. We know that we have an, a phase of negative pi 4s at 10. So something like this. And again, through the odd symmetry of phase, we have a positive pi 4s at negative 10 frequency. And in reality, of course, this keeps going. It's just going to be 0 for all further values in both directions, in both amplitude and phase. And that's it. This is the full picture of the Fourier series in this example. Now, for more complicated series, this is going to look a lot more complicated and contain a lot more values. But altogether, what the Fourier series says is how much of each frequency cosine and at what phase we have to add together in order to generate a specific signal. When the signal is itself a summation of cosines, you're going to have a finite number of non-zero Fourier series coefficients. If this signal were more complicated, you could get an infinite summation where you have various proportions and phases of an infinite number of cosines in order to again generate that signal. Again, for more detailed explanations, I would refer you to my other video on Fourier series. So altogether, we have seen how the Fourier series is most commonly expressed and, more importantly, what this representation actually means. We have also seen why we plot the series the way we do, and once again, this is, this is just another representation of the same thing.